I got this new sled here uh, that we're going to use to uh, pull behind the four-wheeler. Uh, throw my kids in there and, and drag them around. I know it's not safe, you know, save it. I know it's uh, not the best thing to do, but with a long enough rope, I think it'll probably be safe. Um, one of the things I'm going to do, though, is uh, even though this is made for, like, dragging deer and gear out of the woods, uh, I'm going to modify this and make this a little bit stronger. So my plan is to uh, put a couple of brackets uh, over and under it, bolt it down, and then weld a, uh, a little U-section out of it so we can... Uh, thread a new bigger rope through it so should make it a little bit stronger and hold it on to there a little bit better and uh, possibly not rip it through in case you know it accidentally uh, gets jerked by the ATV so we're gonna do that next so the idea would be to uh, add a couple of brackets on uh, top and bottom of the uh, sled itself so the sled is kind of shaped like that and I'm just gonna add a bracket on top and there's another bracket on the bottom and then I'm going to make a little U-shaped piece of metal stick out from there that I can run a, uh, a D connector into. Um, and then we'll attach a toe strap to it. So that's the plan. We're going to try to do that to the front of that sled. All right, so I just cut uh, two sections of this uh, eighth inch mild steel here. Not the perfect cuts, but I did it by hand and it doesn't really matter. So. You know, ignore that, and uh, we're going to start bending the uh, um, 5 16 rod, and uh, we'll cut those and weld them on. So here's the first uh, bend. So I just took this 5 16 rod and uh, bent it around. Uh, you could use a blowtorch to make it easier, but uh, this bent fairly well just by hand, so it should work out all right. I'm going to cut this off and make another one, and then uh, we'll get to welding. Doesn't look too bad, but uh, let's see. Move this out of the way, put this on there. Uh, of course, it's going to be right where the bolts are. Yep, back to the drawing board. Guess we're going to make this just a little bit skinnier and cut it off a little bit further. I uh, made the first bracket and I kind of bent it down a little bit and uh, made so that it would uh, connect with this other one that I made. Um, I had to bend it around like this so that it would go around the front lip of the sled and uh, bend back up and touch this. So this is actually upside down. Um, so this is going to sit like this. We're just going to tack weld that in place <clears throat> temporarily. We'll cut the uh, excess off here and uh, we'll be able to cut a couple of holes in each plate and we'll be able to bolt it on. And that should work. I was able to finish up these brackets. Um, drilled the, the holes through. Well, uh, this leg should be on the top, so this little bit uh, bent like this will go underneath the lip of the front of the sled. That'll be on the bottom, so we'll sandwich down on the top, and uh, we'll be able to put that uh, D clevis right through there. So should work out great. All right, I wanted to show the final result here. So this is it bolted on. See you uh, from the side, kind of what I had to deal with with that lip there. And you can see it's got a D-clevis connected to it and a 3,000 pound toe strap. Uh, i got a D-clevis on the other end of that that I attached to a special hitch on the back of my four-wheeler. And uh, I have given this a try. I sat in this and I had somebody else drive me around and, you know, I'm 250 pounds. So it didn't pull through or rip or break or anything like that. Uh, it actually worked really well. So uh, $20 sled from Farm and Fleet in the upper Midwest here. It worked great. This setup worked fantastic. You know, got up to... 20 miles an hour moving along and no problems. So if you guys want to give it a try, it was pretty simple to make. Give it a go. Let me know what you think.